Hi. So in this video, we are going to look at uh, the two versions of Ikey. We have uh, two Ikey versions, version 1 and version 2, Ikey v1 and Ikey v2. In case of Ikey v1, we have two phases. Ikey v1 has two phases and the key exchange and the establishment of security associations, IPsec security associations. This happens in two phases. In phase one, the two IKEY peers negotiate and establish a secure channel, which is an IKEY SA, which means that phase one is responsible for developing an IKEY security association between the two peers, whereas the phase two is responsible for developing an IPsec security association between the two peers. And this is done using the secure and authenticated channel established in phase one. So in phase one, we have established an IKEY security association or IKEY SA and in this phase we have developed a secure channel for communication between the two peers. Once the secure channel has been established during phase one, then we use this channel to establish an IPsec security association between the two peers. So unless phase one has completed successfully, we cannot have a successful IPsec SA development between the two peers. So I, phase two is dependent upon phase one. However, in case of Ikey version 2, we do not have these two phases. Ikey version 2 uh, actually simplifies this process and this negotiation process is simplified. The key is generated and security associations are established for IPsec in just one negotiation process. So we can say that instead of having two separate phases, all this happens within a single phase or we can say it's it all happens in just one negotiation process. So let's take a look at these two Ikey version 1 and version 2, these two versions one by one. First we look at Ikey version 1. As you know that Ikey version 1 has got two phases, so this is phase 1 and this is phase 2. In case of phase 1, we can have two options, we can have two modes, either we can have a main mode which uses six messages for developing the Ikey essay or we can have an aggressive mode which develops on which uses only three messages or lesser number of messages to develop an association between the two two Ikey peers. Once using either the main mode or the aggressive mode in phase one, we can use either one of them in phase one. And Ikey or ISA camp security association has been developed between the two peers, then we move on to the phase two. The phase two is called the quick mode and using the, the phase one negotiation with main mode or aggressive mode, the quick mode is responsible for developing the IPsec SA between the two, two devices. The IPsec SA is developed between the two devices and or the two uh, peers and the two peers can then communicate with each other securely because now we have an IPS, IPsec SA developed between them and they can do secure communication with each other. If you look at the uh, the, the message exchange or the, or the communication between the two peers using the, the, in the phase one using either main mode or the aggressive mode, we will see that in case of main mode, there are six messages that are being exchanged as we saw in the last slide. There are six messages that are exchanged between the two peers in the main mode. However, in the aggressive mode, only three messages are exchanged between the two peers. However, when these six messages are exchanged and a lot of information is exchanged between them, as you can see, the, the initiator sends the IKEY proposal, the responder search for the matching IKEY proposal, whether it has the parameters defined according to this proposal and it responds that yes, I have the parameters available so we can develop an IKEY association and then the, the keys are generated and exchanged with each other and then finally using those keys, the two sides authenticate each other. And as you can see, since the keys have been generated here and exchanged here, so this communication is encrypted. These bold green arrows show encrypted communication. This communication is non-encrypted, however, this communication is encrypted. Similarly, in case of aggressive mode, since only three messages are being exchanged and we have a lot of information that is being exchanged during these messages and multiple tasks have been performed in, in each message exchange, so the communication is not encrypted. This is all non-encrypted communication. 
so if you want to do secure and encrypted key exchange or encrypted uh, i key security asset development between the two peers you should be using the, the main mode however if you want to put less load on the devices on your gateways and you want to establish a security association quickly you can do the use the aggressive mode so it depends upon us whether we want to use the main mode or the or the aggressive mode the major differences between the main mode and aggressive mode are given here as you know that six messages are used in main mode and only three messages are used in the aggressive mode so main mode is is uh, more intense than the, the aggressive mode aggressive mode is as the name suggests is more aggressive and can develop the security association quickly the main mode provides identity protection since the last two messages are encrypted the aggressive mode does not provide identity protection because of its high message integration because the multiple messages are combined or exchanged together so the the cost that we have to bear or the compromise that we have to do is that we do not get identity protection because the messages are the last messages where identity information is exchanged are not encrypted the main mode can use only an ip address to identify a peer whereas the aggressive mode can use an ip address or the name to identify a peer we mentioned earlier that uh, peer identification can be based either on the ip address or on the name of the peer so here we can see that main mode only uses ip address and the aggressive mode can use either the ip address or the name to identify the peer so where would we use uh, main mode or aggressive mode mainly if we have a nat device in between our tunnel then this means that we cannot use the main mode we'll have to use the aggressive mode because uh, main mode requires the ip address based identification uh, identity authentication however uh, since the ip addresses are changed by the nat devices so we cannot have ip address based identity authentication so we need to use the aggressive mode so this is one of the the major reason why we would be using if you are using i key version 1 and we have to do a nat traversal we can only use the aggressive mode secondly if the ip address of the initiator is variable or unknown if we have a situation where the initiator's ip address is not known or the initiator's ip address can change any time in case of a hub and spoke scenario there also we can use the aggressive mode because the ip address is not fixed and the the main mode requires an ip address for peer identification or identity authentication if the initiator already knows or comprehensively learns the policy used by the responder it is faster to establish an ip address in aggressive mode so if the peer already knows they already know each other and secure tunnel has already been established once so they can always use the aggressive mode for for future or for subsequent ike uh, security association development and then the phase 2 of uh, ike version 1 which is called the quick mode this is the mode in which the ipsec security associations are developed the initiator sends the ipsec proposal identity and authentication data the responder searches whether the parameters match on the responder side if the parameters match then the the responder is going to send a confirmation and there is the initiator is going to acknowledge the confirmation and hence an ipsec sa is developed between the two sides and as you can see that all the communication that is happening here is encrypted and secure because ike has already performed its tasks and it has already developed a secure channel between these two sides similarly if we look at ike version 2 as i mentioned earlier that ike version 2 is a is a much more simplified uh, mechanism for exchanging the or for establishing the security association between the two gateways or the two devices <coughs> so i key version 2 reserves most of the features of i key version 1 and some extended features for example nat traversal it provides the nat traversal functionality and most of the features of i key 1 are introduced in the i key version 2 framework as well the process important thing is that the process of establishing a security association using i key version 2 negotiation is much simpler than using i key version 1 because in i key version 1 we have two separate phases and a large number of messages that are being exchanged between the 
between the two peers. However, in case of uh, IP version, IQ version 2, the number of messages are less and there are no separate phases. So, in normal cases, a pair of IPsec security associations can be established only through four messages and two exchanges. So, we only need to have four messages or two exchanges with a total of four messages. Once these are exchanged, the IPsec security association is developed between the two peers using IQ version 2. So you can see that this is much simpler as compared to IQ version 1 where at least 6 or possibly 9 messages had to be exchanged between the two peers before they could develop an IPsec essay. In IQ version 2, all messages appear in pairs in the form of request response cycles. The responder needs to confirm all messages sent by the initiator because it's a request response cycle so every request has to be responded to by the other side if no confirmation packet is received within the required period the initiator needs to retransmit the packet which improves the security in IQ version 2 there are three types of exchanges the initial exchange the create child security association exchange this is kind of optional and then finally the informational exchange these are the three message exchanges which happens between the two peers before they can start communicating with each other securely. So if you look at the look at the four messages that are exchanged, first of all the IQ security association parameters are exchanged between them. It checks the parameters and then it sends a confirmation. It accepts the parameters and the IQ security association is, is established. Then the identity information is exchanged which is authenticated by the two sides and once this has been done then this means that the two sides have authenticated each other and now they can start communicating with each other using the security association developed by them. Once this security association has been developed, then depending upon whether we want to develop a child security association, which means that this security association can be used for, for securing subsequent communication between these two peers, that's an optional thing if you want to do that. then extra messages will have to be exchanged between the two devices otherwise the security association has been developed and secure communication can can proceed then there is the, the informational exchange between the two devices this is generally used for exchanging control information that is if there is any error or if there is uh, any alarm on one side for exchanging the information between the two this information exchange requires communication between the two sides. So one side can send control information, the other side note, notes down or the other side takes note of that communication or that information and sends information from its side to the to the first side. So these two sides can exchange information, informational exchange between themselves and this is going to be part of the what we call the IQ version 2 information exchange. So this is the difference or so this is how IQ version 2 works as compared to IQ version 1. The configuration of uh, IPsec is very simple, very easy. In the first go it looks difficult, however once you understand the concept and you understand the flow, the steps are very logical. So we can define first of all, we have to define the traffic that is going to be subjected to IPsec which means the traffic which is going to be protected. We might not want to protect all the traffic that is being exchanged between the two peers, so we use access control lists to specify the traffic which needs to be protected by IPsec. Then we configure IKE parameters or we do the IKE related configuration which means the parameters for IKE and the, the peer related information which is our IKE peer. Then we configure the IPsec security proposal or the IPsec related uh, parameters. Finally, we combine these three in the form of an IPsec security policy or we can have a profile as well. So we combine all these three parameters in the form of a policy and this policy is then going to be applied to an interface or to, to any of the, of the egress or ingress interfaces which are going to provide us security based on the application of this policy. And then if needed, we need to configure a private route so that the traffic can be forwarded through the through the tunnel that we have created or we provide a route for the traffic to reach the destination on the other side of the of the IPsec tunnel. So this is how we, we are going to do the configuration. So in the next uh, video we are going to look at the actual configuration how we 
do the configuration in different scenarios for example in point to point or point to multi point or GRE, IPSEC, EPMs etc. So see you in the next video. Thank you.